All right, tell you what, bud. We'll let you out. And when you find the engine, <laughs> we'll we'll pick you up and, and feed you again. No deal. Okay. So let's just keep it rolling. Check, 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 check. In 2001, I moved back to Santa Cruz to start a film company with a friend of mine I'd met in college. Uh, we were making medical documentaries for PBS. And then I was making my own independent films on the side, really just student films, but without being in school. And at the time, I was making a World War II short. And being a, a World War II kind of thing, it was, I was having it take place in the woods. Never mind that Santa Cruz is full of redwoods, and this story took place in the forests of France. But <laughs> anyways, I did most of the filming in a place called the Forest of Nicene Marks. And I'm mentioning this to my parents. My dad tells me there's this abandoned steam locomotive hiding somewhere in the forest up there. Now that, that might not seem that weird, but l let me give you a, a sense of what this area is like. It is not flat at all. It's fairly rugged. It's really densely populated with trees, uh, Douglas fir, redwoods. It's not the kind of place you would expect there to be a railroad. Now, I know logging operations happen all over the place, uh, but this is miles from Aptos, which isn't exactly this hopping destination. This would be pretty weird for an engine to be all the way up there and then for nobody to know about it. So if this is true, somebody built a railroad in this difficult remote location and then just left a steam engine in the woods. Well, back in the 1970s, probably mid 70s, a friend of mine had been talking to another friend of ours that had recently seen a lost steam locomotive in the Nicene Mark State Park and uh, gave my, my friend Bob uh, instructions about how to find it. And I think he had a map. Bill had said, it's not hard to find it because it's sitting upright. It's partially buried, but that uh, the stack sticks up and it, it's sitting, not on its side, but sitting upright like it would be if it was on the rails. And so we thought, oh, you know, this is going to be easy to find if we just get in the right lo location and we'll look around. Did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe we hiked three hours or so and had lunch. We were surprised to uh, get way up in the forest there and find uh, a number of little shanty type wooden sheds, wooden buildings there, and rails still, still nailed on what was left of the ties. Then we went hiked on some more after that and got to a place where my friend Bob said, this is where Bill said it ought to be. Let's look around here. And so we looked around and it seemed like we only looked around for maybe a half hour or maybe longer. But, but then it was like, well, we better get going back down the hill because we've got three plus hour hike ahead of us to get back to the car. Bob said, well, you know, old Bill probably didn't do the hike that we just did. He must have come down from the top somehow from the backside of the park drove his car and he had a Volkswagen thing. So, you know, rugged off-road vehicle that would be able to go on fire trails. And, and maybe he came down with a short hike and saw it. Well, there's a payphone. Wonders never cease. I mean, that's gotta be more rare than a locomotive in Santa Cruz. <laughs> listen, listen, see if there's a dial phone. He doesn't know what a dial tone is. Yeah. We found a waterfall. I don't think this was here a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Margaret's Bridge, from which we stand, and we're for the mill site. I started asking locals if anyone knew about this lost locomotive of Nicene Marks. And I mean, to understand, Nicene Marks is over 10,000 acres, so I really needed a starting place. Here's Santa Cruz down here, capital Aptos, and then all of this is Nicene Marks. But everyone I talked to either just didn't know, or it would be something like, you know, I'd say, hey, do you know about this lost steam engine in Nicene Marks? And they'd say, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know about that. R really, well, where is it? Oh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you don't know where it is. So naturally, the next thing to do is check the internet. But remember, this was 20 years ago, and pieces of local lore from some small town isn't something you'd find on the internet. Someone would have to have taken that information and put it up on the internet, and that just hadn't happened. So back to being on my own with 10,000 acres to search, I start to try to apply what common sense I, I can. Now, understand I knew diddly squat about the lumber operation in the 1800s there and the railroads that were built. But there are two main ways into Nicene Marks. The main entrance is at the south, and there's a road that goes up into it. There's a ranger station. There's multiple parking places. This is how everybody gets into Nicene Marks. If the engine was there, people would know about it. People would be walking past it all the time or riding their bikes past it. So I figured it couldn't be there. It must be, like my dad said, you must have to go in from the north. Now, the north from Santa Cruz, it's not that far of a distance as a crow flies, but the way you have to drive, it's gonna take you an hour to get up there. And this is in the days before GPS and Google Maps. I would be taking several trips up there just to find roads that I thought went into the park, but were actually locked gates that said no trespassing. So being young, poor, and frankly busy, I gave up. Home of Prieta Mill side. The remnants of something there. So this would have been where the mill was a hundred years ago. None of these trees would have been here. Right. I've seen the pictures though, looking from this end and up, this doesn't seem wide enough. I mean, it has to be between here and that sign because yeah, it, it can't be up that way. There's nothing there. And here, here's at the lumber company, you can see how how the buildings are foot any place that they could. The trees don't start to look here. <laughs> it, where could you stand? We know where this is. Yeah. Where could you stand and be able to see See, it, see, see like that, yeah. I don't know. Well, it looks like all the low-hanging fruit, the easy-picking trees got felled and cut up into lumber. Did you find anything? I saw something going across the bridge, like, not going across the bridge. There's a bridge? No. Oh. What? I thought I saw a piece of land that just went across the river. Oh. But I didn't see any trails, so... You didn't find any locomotives? No. All right. So how, how did today go? Uh, not very well. How many locomotives did we find? Zero. Oh. <laughs> so you want to go with me up to Sand Point? Sure. Okay, fast forward 20 years. I randomly decided to do a Google search for steam engine Nicene Marks, just kind of bored one afternoon. This pops up. Amongst the other railroad legends here, it tells the story of Frederick Hinn's Betsy Jane, which last worked in the area that's now the forest of Nicene Marks. Hinn uh, did all kinds of things, uh, very wealthy. He, he created Capitola. If you're not familiar with the area, it's a, it was a vacation destination between Santa Cruz and Aptos. It's now its own city. He also owned lumber operations all over the place uh, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And he, he did a bunch of other things, but they're not related to this. The writer of the article then goes on to talk about a previous ranger named Nils Bergman, who supposedly stumbled on the Betsy Jane when exploring the newly established park in 1964. But he refused to tell anyone where it was. 
He said it was there, but he didn't know what people would do with it. So he refused to give up the information about where it was, and he may have even purposely led people astray that were looking for it. Okay, this is getting way more interesting than I anticipated, so now I really start digging. Q Indiana Jones saying 90% of archaeology is done in the library, or in this case, the internet. Aptos, the, the current town nearest to Nicene Marks, has a museum with a lot of online material, including period photos of the railroads, logging operations, stuff like that. It's, it's amazing what the, they've put up online. Uh, SantaCruzTrains.com has a ton of articles on the history of the area. Then there's this article from 1974. Betsy Jane's Rusty Remains Found Near Nicene Marks. It mentions two college students who claim to have found a steam engine in Nicene Marks. And they said it was along Aptos Creek north of the Loma Prieta sawmill. But that puts it miles south from where Betsy Jane was supposed to be last working. So this is Aptos Creek running up here, and this is the Loma Prieta mill site. And we know where this is. According to the newspaper article, the college students said they found the steam engine north of the mill site along Aptos Creek. The thing is, Aptos Creek has a bend and then goes this way. So that would mean if we took their account at face value, the steam engine they found somewhere around here. But if there weren't signs and you didn't know any better, would it be possible that you thought that this creek, you're still walking along the same creek, it's just a different fork. This one going straight up, this is actually Bridge Creek. And the thing is, this area right here is what's known as the Splint Stuff area. And this is where the Betsy Jane was last working. That's still north of the mill site. So if they were mistaken about which creek they were on, they're in the right place. But if it's not the Betsy Jane, the mill site is one of the last places engines would have been. So maybe there's another steam engine over here. And here's where it starts to get complicated. There are a number of different operations in the area, some competing, some in, in, in joint things. Uh, some moved from one location to the other. Some were destroyed by fires. Some were rebuilt. Some weren't. Some moved from one place and then moved back. And the accounts don't all agree. In one, there are two Shea locomotives that were there when the Loma Prieta Company shut down, which is one of the last things to happen in the area with, with the lumber companies and the railroads. And in one account, both of those Shays were sold, and it sounds like they were sold to the same place. In another account, only one of those Shea locomotives was sold to one place. So where's the second one? Maybe it's along Aptos Creek. And then to make it even worse, there were two Betsy Janes. An older one that was used to lay down a lot of the early Santa Cruz Railroad. And then the later one, the one we're interested in, that was a saddle tank engine and lovingly called by the people who worked with it, the struggling flea. Both engines worked in the area, but it's the second one, the later one, the tank engine, that has the strongest case for still being out there. Not that anyone's sure where the first one ended up. But there's books, too, good ones, uh, the best of which has been this. It's a three-book series. I've only got two of them here. Uh, this is edited by Derek Whaley, and it's, it includes some of his content, but a lot of it is content that he found from Ronald Powell, which is from years ago, and includes a lot of in-period accounts. Uh, this was just published a couple years ago in 2022, and it covers blow by blow everything that happened in those mountains. Book three even goes so far as to pinpoint the exact location that Betsy Jane was last working. It even pieces together the evidence that it's still out there. This was like finding the jackpot. At least for a guy with nothing better to do than research transportation equipment from 100 years ago. That's what's left of the tracks, or of the ties, of the SB main line. The trail we're on is where the main line was. We're way the heck up here now. Still find evidence of the railroads. More tires.
If you're wondering how they got a steam engine all the way up here, they disassembled it, put the pieces in mule pulled wagons, and hauled it up here pieces at a time, and then reassembled it where the tracks were. Which kind of makes you wonder why couldn't they have just done that to salvage it after it fell? Maybe they did. Maybe the accounts are wrong. Maybe this is all a giant waste of time. Okay, here's what we know. Whaley pieced together information from period accounts with Bergman's story, plus information he got from Bergman's supervisor. But to boil it down, in 1918, the Betsy Jane was being used in a remote area above Bridge Creek, an area called the Splint Stuff area. This was a crazy mess of narrow gauge tracks up in the hills, not connected to any of the other railroad lines. Meaning the wood that was harvested there had no direct way of getting down to the main line, down to the Southern Pacific line. So what they were doing is loading the wood onto their flat cars being pulled by the Betsy Jane, taking it down to the end of their maze of track at a point uh, near the, the beginning of, of Bridge Creek and below Sand Point. And from Sand Point, they would hoist it using a steam donkey engine. This is just a steam engine that doesn't move, doesn't, doesn't have wheels. It runs a, a drum usually that's got metal cables on it that's, that's hoisting the wood up. So they hoist the wood up to Sand Point, which is up on the ridge, and there they're mounting it onto rail cars that are on a line the Molino Company built that goes to the Loma Prieta Mill and ultimately to Aptos to the Southern Pacific Main Line. And that route that the, the wood took once it was up on Sand Point, the, the train tracks there, that's now the Aptos Creek Fire Road. We know where that is, we know where Sand Point is, we know where the end of Bridge Creek is, we know where the Splint Stuff tracks were. Now, in the middle of September of 1918, there was a huge storm, five inches of rain in, in just an evening. The Betsy Jane was at the end of the line below Sand Point when this storm hit and it washed out the ground beneath the Betsy Jane down into Bridge Creek. And it washed Betsy Jane with it. Betsy Jane fell from there about 100 feet down, somehow managed to stay upright, uh, didn't, didn't seem to tumble or anything from, from the accounts, it, it was intact. But it's now 100 feet below the already remote tracks of the Splint Stuff area. From all the period accounts, that's where Betsy Jane remains. So then 50 years later, Bergman is up at Sand Point. This is about 300 feet above where the, where the track was. He comes down and he's scouting for possible trail locations. And he finds what he thinks is the remains of an old railroad line. And he follows it down and sees, it's like, okay, this was clearly a track, but it's washed out here. And where it's washed out, he looks down and 100 feet below that is this little saddle tank engine, the Betsy Jane. Now, he doesn't know anything about the Betsy Jane but he's amazed to find the steam engine that's completely intact. Supposedly he admitted this to a supervisor years later when they were taking a break above Sand Point. He said, I found the engine directly below us. It's now covered in, in landslide though. Now nobody knows if that's true or not because if it is covered, we're not seeing it. But by the time he admitted this, that would have been after my dad's story of the guy who said, have you seen this engine? So if he's seen it, he may have actually been at this place. They were looking in the area where this should have been. And even if you take Bergman's story out of this, it all lines up. We know where the Splint Stuff area is. We know where those tracks were. We know they end at the end of Bridge Creek. And that means the Betsy Jane's got to be somewhere in there. Thing is, if it's buried, we might never know. Well, that's something you don't see every day. So there was a bridge going across here at one point. That's all that's left. So the Splint Stuff area be up there. I don't know how well you can tell on camera. That's a steep way up. So this isn't going as planned. Uh, I wanted to get some nice footage of Maple Falls, uh, but there's been a big landslide, and so the area's closed. And landslides are also why there's little hope of finding this engine above ground. So I've hiked up into the where the actual Splint Stuff area was, and 
spot I'm standing on right now isn't that steep, but it was quite a slog getting up here, and there's further to go if I want to reach the top. I'm a little sore. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move tomorrow. I've had blisters form, and it's fine because they've already had the skin all peeled off of them. The important thing is that I have taken a massive cold shower to get as much of the poison oak off of me as possible. And some of my clothes are in the wash, some of them are being burned. There's something that I hadn't said on camera because I wanted it to be a little bit of a surprise. I knew that going out there, there was little chance of finding the engine. But if you look on Google Earth, there's clearly the remains of something up Bridge Creek uh, above Maple Falls. And I mean, it's, it's clear as day there. I think what that is, is a donkey engine. And that may have fallen from Sand Point. Uh, it could have fallen from either side of Bridge Creek. That is a steam engine. It's quite a bit bigger than the Betsy Jane. It's not, you know, a moving, it's not a railroad engine. Uh, but I thought that would be at least something to say, hey, you know, here's something cool out here. Here's evidence of what was going on. It's, uh, I'm trying to navigate around to see if I can get above that spot and get a shot of it. Uh, but otherwise, I'm just leaving here with a lot of exercise and some pretty footage. The sides of the canyon, you know, coming up from Bridge Creek, go like this. And then you get to Maple Falls, where it is a sheer drop. But here, let me show you on Google Earth. Because Google Earth does this 3D thing, which see as I move this, it's simulating how steep it is. And it, I, I looked at this ahead of time and thought, there's no way it's that steep. It's, it's, cause there's, there's trees, they can't, they can't grow on a slope like that and be this thick. No, they, they do. It's, I don't think it's quite as steep as this makes it look, but it's pretty darn close. And I didn't know how I was gonna do that. I thought, oh, I'll get there and I'll figure it out. You know, people figure these things out. But since I got turned away, I was like, great, I'm, I need to find a way around this anyway. So I went back a couple hundred yards and e even there, the, the sides of the hillside are like this. But I saw a spot that wasn't too densely populated with trees and it just had a lot of pine needle and, and, and different tree droppings all over the, the ground. And I thought, you know, that would be an easy way to climb up. I wouldn't want to climb down it because you'd end up sliding, but going up, you'd have traction, you can get up there. We know Sand Point is this place well above, it's 1600 feet, and I'm betting you can see that donkey engine from Sand Point, but there's a road that connects to Sand Point that, well, a trail, well, there's a road and a trail uh, that, that go along back the way I came up on the top of Hinkley Ridge, and it's somewhere around 1400 uh, feet elevation at that point. Well, if you look on a map, I'm not far from the Hinkley Ridge Trail where I am by Maple Falls. I mean, maybe a quarter of a mile, but that's as the crow flies. Again, it's like this. I've got to go from 500 feet to 1400 feet. So I just thought, well, let me see what I can do. And I quickly got up to about a thousand feet. And then I was having trouble with, there's a lot of ravines, a lot of just kind of drainage things. And so you'd go away and then you'd hit one of these and it's like, okay, well now I have to go up to get around it. So, so that, that's slowing me down. I get up to about 1100 feet and then the vegetation starts to change. My scrawny little legs are burning like crazy. But I get to a point where it's not so much trees, it's brush and it's, it's like manzanita tree things, but, but just, just you know the, the, this tall, but just gnarled branches all going down. And so to, to keep going up, I have to crawl through some. And there's going to be more and more little spots of poison oak. And sometimes they're kind of where I, I'm trying to get through. Hello, poison oak. As I get higher and higher up, I'm taking more and more risks with the poison oak because I really don't want to go back down the way I uh, came up. I really want to get to Hinkley Ridge. I get to 1300 feet elevation. My phone has no service, but the GPS tracking is still working. As the crow flies, I'm a little more than halfway from Maple Falls, from, from Bridge Creek to Hinkley Ridge. But at 1300 feet, I know I'm near the top. I can see, you know, you go from seeing mountainside and trees to seeing trees and I'm seeing a lot of blue sky. So I know I'm so close to the top. And I get to the parts where I'm crawling through this, 
these manzanita things and I can't even stand up. So like I've been crawling under them to get to the places where I can then walk. I'm getting to where I'm crawling in. It's like, there's nowhere to go here. I got to back, back out of this. And when I say crawling, I mean on my belly. I don't mean hands and knees. As I'm getting more and more discouraged going up, I start to realize, you know, I'm looking at, at my progress on, on the phone and, and you go from a trail where I went four miles in just over an hour and now it's been close to an hour and I've only gone an eighth of a mile. It's starting to weigh on me a little bit and I start to worry that when I get to the top of what I can see, I'll be on a ridge, but I won't be on Hinkley Ridge. I was worried that I was gonna to get to the top and then it was gonna go back down and then back up to where Hinkley Ridge was. And as tough as that is, it's the vegetation that's, it's not like just walking in between trees. It's, it's brush up to my chest that I'm trying to get through and 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 woody it's it's not like oh you just just push through the leaves no no you can't physically do it but it's too brittle to climb over when I got back home I, I looked on Google Earth with their their 3d imaging and I was on the right ridge and I was so close to the top I had a hundred feet of elevation and less than an eighth of a mile and I would have been there uh, and it should have it should have gotten easier. I mean, again, I, I've just done 800 feet, 100 feet, wouldn't be much more. And there's there's a trail up here, and I could have taken that back if if uh, if I had any legs left, I could have gone to Sand Point. But I didn't, and I kind of figured that. Finally, decided I've got to go back the way I came. I'm not even exactly sure which way I came. Now I've got my phone, I've got a compass, I can hear Bridge Creek below me, so. I know the general direction, but it's 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 going it's getting across these ravines and and just finding a, a path through the brush and the trees where you can get there in places where it's just it's I mean you know it some places are like this some places are like this some places are like this I thought okay well at least let me take the opportunity I get down to there's these areas that you can tell with the Splint Stuff area because they had a narrow gauge railroad there which means it has to be, there has to be somewhat leveled area. And you get to the spot where, you know, the, the mountain's doing this, all of a sudden it levels out and there are cut down redwood trees. Evidence of hens operation up at the splint stuff area. This is it. We're up here pretty high. I tried to hike up towards Hinkley Ridge up that way, but the vegetation is just too thick. I got to about 1,300 feet. You'd need another logging operation to get it where I was trying to get. It sucks. I really wanted to get to that donkey engine. Uh, but I uh, don't want to be a problem. People have to come and get me. Man, if somebody knows where this engine is, you know, post in the comments or something. I, I, I would love to know. So on the long hike back, something kept bothering me. Where was this engine that the guy my dad talked to who gave him a map where did he find an engine? It sounded like whatever they did, they took trails, and yeah, they, they looked for the engine somewhere off the trails, but they couldn't have been where I was. And that, that was so far beyond the trails in, in places that, that you sh really shouldn't be hiking. I mean, it's, it's closer to climbing than walking. So what engine, was it the Betsy Jane? Was it a different engine? What engine did he find I started wondering if the steam engine the college students found, they just said it was a steam engine. They didn't say it was the Betsy Jane. If they did just go up Bridge Creek, maybe they found that donkey engine. It's clearly been lying there for over a hundred years. It's a big steam engine. It's just, it's not a railroad engine. This guy described an engine with a smokestack, where as a donkey engine normally sits upright, the whole thing is its stack. If this thing had a smokestack, this was a railroad engine that he was describing. Where was this? So something's still out there. It might be covered in, in dirt and it'd be nice to hire an airplane with ground penetrating radar. But the accounts of the Betsy Jane all include somebody hiking and coming across it. Somewhere there's a place that you can get to. It might not be the easiest thing, but there's a place you can get to and there was a steam engine there. The thing is, though, there being a steam engine up there is just a side effect of the thing that I find so fascinating, which is that it's so rugged, it's so remote, and people built towns there, they built railroads there, 
they had major lumber operations. It's not just felling trees. It's chopping them up. It's hauling stuff out with mules, with, with railroad. With, they had hoists from one ridge to the other with steel cables going across that they would, they would haul lumber across the ridges with. A hundred years ago, people were doing nearly impossible things in these mountains. The idea of just the, the ingenuity and the will of mankind doing something like this it's, it's just, it's astounding. I mean, you walk around there and you would never think there was a town there. You would never think there were multiple railroad lines. And when I say a town, there was Loma Prieta, there was Monte Vista, which then moved and there was a second Monte Vista further up. Uh, there were multiple camps with multiple buildings. The, the town of Loma Prieta had a school, had a post office, had a Western Union, had, had the train station had a hotel, two hotels and a saloon, multiple houses. It's just amazing to walk through this dense forest and think, yeah, at one time this had been all cleared out and there was a town here. People were scaling these mountains and hauling up an engine in pieces with mules just to assemble it in this ridiculously remote location that couldn't be connected to, to any other track. Now it's kind of nice to be back where I can just put my leftover pizza in the oven and sit down on the couch and have a nice evening. Because I think that's what I'm going to do now. New plan. So if you look at the map of the Splint Stuff area, the Hinkley Fire Road, the, the Hinkley Ridge Trail, is right above the top of the Splint Stuff area. And the Splint Stuff area actually has a, a line that goes, goes up here, which makes sense because we know from the accounts of Hen's operation that they brought the Betsy Jane up from the other side, from the Soquel side, not from the Loma Prieta side. So that means, I mean, this is a narrow gauge railroad, but that means there's got to be some kind of semi-accessible way down here. When I was up here, I think I was I was over here, but you could see it, it's you can see in the footage this is flatter area where, where I'm at. So obviously it's been a hundred years, but there's probably a walkable way somewhere around here, which would then get you to where this line went to, to where the loading point was. So if we look on here, the Hinkley Ridge Trail and Road would be up there. So if I take that trail up and can find this spot, then there should be a way that's manageable to get down here and explore where this line went at the end and where the hoisting up point was and the Betsy Jane should be somewhere there. So now I just need the skin on my feet to grow back.